Yeah, so as far as like dealing with anxiety during like during a game or especially like um, when I was younger, uh, over the course of my career, I had a lot of issues like early in the game before I'd settle in. Um, and what worked for me, it may work for some kids, but I would try to just get as as mad as possible. Um, I would try to like flip a switch into like being a psycho. Um, and that would kind of like, you kind of get get that, that overly masculine persona, persona you know, yeah. and that would kind of let the anxious and the nerves kind of disappear because then you're just kind of like, you're just trying more to like on being angry, right? Being more angry. focused on your intensity than yeah. than uh, than worrying about what the outcomes could be. I uh, I tried doing that in college, and I had I had a lot of success with it, but I also think that 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 also caused failure for me. But it caused failure outside the lines, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that is something that I like for a lot of people. I think that there's some people that can do it really naturally. Maybe you were one of those people that could do it very naturally. I, I did the same thing. I really had to. I remember. I remember my junior year. I literally had a note card of things that that pissed me off in my hat, and I would look at it to remind myself and like be upset. The thing is, is that I actually carried that off the field. That mm -hmm. was the issue that I had with that. Um, and I think that part of that was a little bit of immaturity. I think part of that was not understanding to draw the line at the field. Because I'll say this, like. When you get in that train of thought, I'm sure you would agree here. You go red, right? Mm -hmm. Just like there's nothing, there's nothing to stop it, um, and that's good. But I think that you have to clarify that, and you have to draw the line of when it's between the lines. Yeah. So like everything outside of that, return back to yourself, and like that's something I never was able to do. And because of that, my own balance for anxiety, honestly, was my prep work. It was everything that went into stepping onto the mound and pitching. I did the same exact thing. And it's not its not like dying, living and dying by the routine, but it also is utilizing the routine to allow myself to feel more comfortable every single day. Because like, like honestly, I'm somebody that in a new situation, I'm already anxious enough. So mm -hmm. making that routine, the consistency of, I'm doing this at this time, this at this time. I, I literally had, I had a printed out sheet of like, depending on the game time, here's when I started everything and here's where I got it rolling, um, which made me feel the exact same stepping out there and warming up. Because like, I don't know about you, but when I step on the mound, all my anxiousness and nerves went away. Mm -hmm. It was when I would walk out right. to the line to start tossing before the game is when I'd start really getting anxious because that's also when like all the fans have their eyes like only on you and I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my way to kind of combat that a little bit. Yeah, looking back, my routine, because I had a, probably similar to what you did, I had a really, uh, you know, if I had the time, it was a pretty long um, routine, go, time. going through all my stuff, you know, yeah. and like, and that kind of like, you know, because I have, I, I'm a person that has a lot of anxiety anyways, especially over things like that. Yeah. So like, me just slowly checking those boxes, you know, like getting things done, um, that kind of like, that consistency. Um, and looking back, I remember that the, when there was times where that was disrupted, um, it caused some issues oh, for yeah. me um, as oh, far yeah. as like my preparedness. First first time I ever, uh, I was ever in a town that didn't have a Chipotle, I was not in a good spot. Mm. Because like I, I lived and died by it. So like I said, like like my routine, and this is, this is also the fault of the routine. Like I think that I think there is that balance because you don't you also don't want to like live and die by the routine because the second one thing gets brought out of that routine then it all falls right but like and that's what happened to me too is that i went to that town that didn't have a chipotle and like it's it's like honestly looking back at it it's so stupid that i even believe this to begin with but it's like am i so stupid to think that if i don't eat my chipotle i can't pitch good today mm -hmm. like like that's that line of superstition and routine that like i don't think should be crossed i think that I think superstition, I won't say it necessarily doesn't hold value. I think it has value because it kind of mm -hmm. plays into the routine a little bit. Yeah. But like you shouldn't live and die by the superstition. You should live and die by the routine. Right. Because um, that, that one tripped me up a lot. Like I, I did not pitch good that game because I didn't have my Chipotle. And it was literally all here. There's nothing physical about that at all. That's yeah. And also I think, it, I think it's absolutely mental because um, like for example, as a starter, I rarely ever had any type of issue with command yeah. at all yeah. like if i walk someone it was i, I meant to walk them yeah. you know or i was pitching around them yeah 
Um, and then, you know, I, my relief appearances throughout my entire career were extremely limited, yeah. you know, unless it was just like a where I had to throw. Yeah. Um, and well, typically when I would come in relief, the command was like nothing was there. Yeah. I was a different arm. Mm. And I was think... Was that a different mentality? Maybe. I think, I think one, I think I was, I was a little too, too amped up. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, I think I was just... I think that whole process, when you're a starter, that whole like routine of getting ready, for me it was all like that whole process honed in my focus. Yeah. And then being a reliever where it's go get hot and I'm down there, you're, you're trying to get rock and roll. And it's, it's almost like, it's not meditation, but it's almost like a meditation. Right. It's the slow build up to the hyper focus. Right. Yeah. So then whenever I came in my relief appearances, I wasn't up there on the mound and like completely just locked in. It was more of like, you know, I was kind of like, I was kind of being spastic, yeah. you know, and that led into issues that I would, that I typically never had. Yeah. Mm. That level. That, yeah, that's, that's actually, that's a good point because the younger people don't have the same time that we had. Cause yeah. my, my pregame routine was about close to three and a half hours. Um, and on top of that, I'm also aware that some people uh, in high school don't even know that they're pitching until about 30 minutes before the game. Right. Which let's let's go ahead and let's talk about that real quick. Um, please don't ever do that as a coach. Like like seriously. Like I think that 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 doesn't hold any value in any way, shape, or form. I know a lot of people say like, well, we don't want them to overthink it. Like what you're going to end up doing from that is there's going to be that one person that is overthinking it, and yeah, maybe you sacrifice that one overthinker, but you also will have you know three to four guys on the team that are going to benefit greatly from just having their proper warm-up every single time that they're going out there to pitch, knowing the night before, hey, I got to get my sleep, I got to get everything ready so I can go out there and compete at the highest level that I possibly can. That's something that's never made sense to me. Like, yeah. Just let your guys know when they're going to pitch. Yeah, and I think like... I think really what you do is you, you run a massive risk of those guys being unprepared. And, and a higher risk of injury, too, at that. Absolutely, yeah. Because, because, because if, they're, if they're not knowing they're going to pitch tomorrow and they go out and throw with a moderate to a high intensity the day before, now, now they're at a severe risk of injury, which is mm -hmm. another thing you got to talk about, too. Because that also, when you I, – I think that most high school coaches have an idea of who their guys are. Like, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's a little bit more almost simple at that, at that stage of the game because, like, you just have the guys that stand out. So it's easier to know, hey, this is my guy. And I don't know why you wouldn't be able to just say, okay, hey, like, we know our schedule too. So let's go ahead and just schedule you, like, a week yeah. before yeah. because we can do that. Um, I don't know if it's a strategy thing. Um, if it's a strategy thing, I still think that the strategy is wrong. Like, I would rather the team know I was pitching but give myself those six days to get where I needed to be because at the end of the day, hitting's hard. Like, I don't think we have to trick them that much. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, though, at the youth level, I still understand that even if you know when you're pitching, you still have a very limited amount of time to warm up, and that's where knowing <laughs> One, where are you going? So if you're going on the road, you, most of the time when you go on the road, what, you have about maybe 30 minutes Probably. before the game or something like that? Hour maybe. So like on the bus, you can actually be doing stuff on the bus as you're going over there. So like myself, if I was on the bus, I'd be doing like self-tissue release, just trying, like, starting to open myself up because at the end of the day, like I'm also sitting on the bus, I don't want to get cold. So I'll use that as kind of a little time to like activate, get myself warm. That way when I step off the bus, I can go right into my like more explosive types of warm-ups. Um, and that way I'm not like wasting the time that I really need to be getting in, you know, the soft tissue stuff, everything for. Um, that's kind of where it, you got to be almost a little creative, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think with, with youth, youth, like, you know, um, as far as like, you know, because they start pitching in 9 and 10 year olds. So I'd say probably 12 and under, you know, with those kids being young and those games aren't important. I think the way those kids deal with anxiety um, it needs to really come from the coaches and parents allowing them to know that it's, this isn't... Have fun. Yeah, just have fun. <laughs> have fun. Um, because obviously you're going to have anxiety, you're going to have nerves um, whenever you're you're a high schooler pitching in a game that counts, you're in college, you're mm -hmm. in professional baseball, but in youth, those games, they really, they're not important. Um, yeah. It's about going out there having fun and, and getting some experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely.